Do not attempt to adjust your programming. You are now listening to B movies and beyond. Still don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> la 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 Alright Welcome in everyone To B-Movies and Beyond Episode 291 We're getting so close to 300 buddy Will we make it by the end of the year? What's that? Will we make it by the end of the year? Yeah, as long as, I mean, we're doing it weekly, right? Oh, yeah, I, I forgot. It's September, not October. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ryan, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Grand, Peter. How are you doing? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I got a little sick again. <laughs> like a cold? Been, um, yeah, I, I think so, but I don't really have, like, I just had, like, the kind of like, little sore throat. Um, you know, kind of like a head cold, you know, not too much mucus. Except for when I wake up, there's a lot of crap. Um, are you sure it wasn't from a certain party bus? Uh, well, that's what I was gonna say is that you know it might have had something to do with the um crazy weekend that we had for Nikki and Nate's wedding. Um, I don't and, know why uh, they invite us to things. I don't know that. Yes. I mean, <laughs> but in true, like they had like a superhero theme, uh, you know, wedding. And I think in true form to that, you, you unleashed your, your alternate, uh, version of yourself, Ryan. <laughs> I did power up into yeah. Brian Bromero. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh man. Not yeah. only was, dude, I was like a Megazord version of Brian Bromero. There was Hulk hands. There was Captain America shields. I was fighting off the DJ with a shield. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Oh, uh, the things I missed, man. Like, I, you know, I started thinking about it. I was like, man, I was, you know, as soon as the DJ started going and we're all dancing on the floor, like, dude, I pretty much stayed on that dance floor and. And I don't know what happened to a lot of different people. A lot of people like, like, I don't think I saw you for most of it. I didn't see Evan. Like everyone, I was just too busy dancing the night away. Dude, you were dancing your little heart out. You were like I Kevin was. Bacon and Footloose is what yeah. you were. And I was out defending the shield and everybody taking photos, just shoving it right in their face. Do that. That shield was uh, the hit of the wedding. I, I would say. Yes, it was. The other one yeah. was the, the Hulk hands, and by the end of the night, um, they got ripped in half. <laughs> oh, wow. Remember, I got out of the party bus, and um, I think the owner of the Hulk hands was like, give those back to me. I was like, no, no. Did you and rip them in half? No, they grabbed them from the, the finger part and ripped the top parts off, and I was like, see what you just did? <laughs> <laughs> Not my fault. Your fault. <laughs> and I was like, now you just allowed me to hold my beers more efficiently and still punch people with them. So, <laughs> Jeez. oh so, man, well, congratulations, and, Nate and Nikki. And yes, thank you for the shenanigans. And oh, dude, those I would say you and I were probably the messiest, but I would say it's the whole cans because those were in the hot tub, still soaked from the night before, and beer was poured on them copious amounts of time. But Peter, I gotta say, dude. You are, you're, you're like, not the yin to my yang. You're like, if I'm going to be, if you're going to be Bruce Banner Hulk, then I'm Red Hulk. And like, we just decided to party and we did. Um, party. We're taking accept, um, applications for B Movies and Beyond to be on your party bus for your wedding. We will have <laughs> time. We'll record live on it. We'll and, uh, you know, as long as you like um, beer guzzling. I, I guess, which really just turns into just dumping beer on people. <laughs> We're your guys. <laughs> I I channeled my inner Stone Cold Steve Austin. I have been watching way too much wrestling documentaries, my friend. I'm surprised you didn't want to wrestle. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm surprised you didn't try to wrestle Nate. <laughs> 
Oh, dude, the best was a. Uh, hey, Nate. Hey, Nate. Do you wanna? Do you want Ryan or Brian? Um, too late. You got Brian. <laughs> That's awesome. I Nate told me uh, early on in the night because he was like, "Are you at the same level I was for your for our my wedding?" And I was like, "Not yet." He's like, "You better step it up." And and then I think I did because man, you, we partied it up on that party bus. Oh, dude, just. I'll never forget, like, Peter, there's those moments in life where something happens and it's like the most epic thing ever. And pouring beer on one of your best friends and your podcast mate and just cracking two cans together and just foam everywhere. That's, now I get why they do it, dude. I'm just no. going to do that any chance I get now. I, 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 might not, I might not be invited to parties anymore. <laughs> you might not. Um, or. Or I might just be like stuffed outside, or if I see like like uh, garbage bags on the floor, that's my yeah. spot. Or you know, just give some people some warning. Hey, we're gonna do this, so you might want to take a couple steps back. Oh, instead oh. of the after warning I gave him. Well, if you yeah. don't like it, you can get off. <laughs> it's the party bus. <laughs> that was. I think I don't know how many times you told me like it's the party bus. It's okay, basically. And yes, they should leave. If they can't handle the party bus, they need to get off. I was trying to crowd surf. We were yeah. rolling on the floor. Oh, that nasty floor. Oh, oh geez. Um, yeah, it was a great time. Uh, but because of, again, I think from all that, I got sick again. And so I apologize for some coughing in there, uh, you know here and there i took some robitussin but that shit doesn't do anything peter's gonna fall that? asleep halfway through the no it's non-drowsy non oh. you gotta take uh nyquil dude i i just start taking nyquil just go to sleep it's nice yeah i, I don't think you're supposed to do that with the baby oh yeah okay yeah oh yeah you probably need to stay awake well i i just need to be able to you know wake up when you know the baby needs you so true because i did think about that um but yeah yeah i probably i need to wake up <laughs> uh so ryan do you got a quick question for us if not i think i kind of got one perfect <gasps> what how why i have so many questions so um i just watched thor love and thunder Okay, and I, I, I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, I know you saw it and you and you reviewed it, and now you had time to like really think about it. Is it a good movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I did the same thing once I saw Doctor Strange too, and I'm just kind of curious. Like, <clears throat> like there's parts, and again, oh man, it's the same exact thing. There's parts that I liked in it. Uh, but there's also a lot of things in like this is this is really going in an extra odd direction and how it ended was very strange to me oh yeah um yeah and yeah, uh, yeah now that i think about it, what is was thor love and thunder a good movie um i would say that they made the movie for our demographic but was it a good movie N um yeah yes <laughs> see i i think that's kind of how you answer it's it's a question mark at the end yeah i, I guess like you enjoyed I, it right i i did enjoy it the goats were funny i liked the goats i i mean i liked a lot of aspects uh, but then I also was a little bit confused on just the overall, like, how they were telling this story because they had this, like, you know, um, is it Korg, the rock guy? Yeah. Him, like, retelling. And I was getting a little bit confused on if he was really retelling the whole story 
or just parts of it. Like I, I, I was losing track because there are some points where I was like, this is so like, like, um, y- you know, like a storyteller's, uh, portion, you know, like the things that are happening are just so outrageous. It's, it's a storyteller just expanding on and making things so ridiculous, uh, just for entertainment's sake. Dude, I didn't and, think about that, but that's exactly what that movie is. Yeah, and and that's what was going on through certain points. You had Korg come in and do some narration, right? Yeah. And especially early on. And they never really, like, I don't think there was a point where I, there was a, any a sign that actually officially stopped. So if that's not the case, and that's just kind of how they did the whole movie, then I'm like, I kind of get why it was, a little bit of a mess and yeah, why it was, it was yeah and why it was so like to the extremes and almost like overly dumb in some parts and and some of the plot lines i feel didn't weren't totally flushed out which i don't it just i don't know I, I feel like we got to get Taika on this show so we can ask these questions because <clears throat> it, there was just there wasn't a clear point where like, all right, did the guy finish the story and now we're in present time or did he just tell that whole story and this is what came up with and they can just go to, you know, whenever they get to like this multi, more multiverse shit and we're like, <laughs> yeah, that was just some fake story that is made up. Didn't really happen. You know, like it was just. It was so fantastical that it didn't quite feel real to me. Okay. Now that you open my eyes to the movie being Korg telling the story, it's a great movie because like you said, it's a storyteller and someone who's telling that story with a character like Korg, he is a little over the top and kind of whimsical and, and creates a little bit of fantasy, but you could see where in, in the story he's leading you to the darkness and then it pops back up to this brightness and you get these funny elements of uh, Zeus with the orgies and, and, and like his little love story. Notice they, they touched on him being in love with another rock man and telling that story. They elaborated on that. He is a storyteller. So And the way it ended was like, this is how it is, and this is what happened, and they lived happily ever after. And it's like, now now looking at it through the eyes of Korg, it's a great movie. But if you didn't realize that and you can't understand that, it's a bad movie. Like, it doesn't fit in the realm of a comic book movie. It doesn't fit in the realm of a universe. It's enough of a stylized movie where it's a storytelling of Thor and maybe the next one we get might be a true story of Thor, not not these two like stories that are being told by a third character. Yeah, <clears throat> I just it it just seemed like it was almost like an out, you know, where it was like, you know, you've seen those like some of those like biopic movies where they legit know like this didn't happen, but it's so you know, fantastic and just helps drive the story and make it entertaining that they put it in there anyways, but Mm -hmm. they do that, break that fourth wall and like, say like that, that didn't really happen. Like I almost feel like that's going to happen next Thor movie where it's going to be drastically different. And like everything has happened in love and Thor and and thunder is like, nah, nah, only this piece was true. You know, that's just what I kind of how I felt at the end of it. Well, Peter, they're starting to do that with she Hulk. She-Hulk is starting to tell bits and pieces of the Marvel Universe from from a, a what do they call him like a city city hero or something like that where they don't fight the big villains but they see it from that perspective and they see these chunks and big pieces of this big <clears throat> universe put together. So we might be seeing some storytelling movies and some epic movies from Marvel which I'm okay that's a nice little breakup between the two. Yeah. If you go in with those expectations, they're doing great. Uh, you definitely have to go in with lower expectation in these movies. Oh yeah, uh, they, um, uh, yeah, they've been they've been something, you know. Ever since, uh, <clears throat> like Sean Chi, I, I feel like they kind of 
they lost something, you know? They've been really off, but I... either either off or or maybe they, they're giving the directors a, a little ounce of freedom to play around and be creative. Maybe. Like, you watch Miss Marvel, right? Yeah. It had a different tone, different settings, but it, it told that story. I mean, they always... I mean, that's one of the things I think is good about Marvel is that they know all the timelines and how they want to weave this story. And there's certain elements that they have to hit upon. They can't, uh, you know, uh, move away from that unless it makes sense, you know. But they let them do, like, their own little tones for each of these movies, you know. Like, that's what was fun about Ant-Man was, like, that was, like, a heist movie, you know. Uh you could say that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse and of of uh, Madness yeah. was kind of like the first kind of like horror type movie, you know. And um, you know, each one has their own little tones to it, and that and they're bringing that also into the um, you know the the series as well. Uh, that's a that dude. That's <clears throat> a good multiverse. It doesn't all need to be the same. DC is trying to create this, you know, I'm using DC as an example, but they're trying to set this tone across their entire universe. Now, Marvel Marvel realizes that their universe is now a multiverse and it could be different. Everything can be different and everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. <laughs> everything oh, man, is if, awesome. If somehow they bring Legos into this, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, dude. Uh, great question because it did open my eyes to the latest Marvel movies. We have a horror Marvel movie. We have a storytelling Marvel movie. Now, next up, what's what's next? Oh, a very feminist Marvel movie, right? Yeah. So, if I know that's what it is, and I go in with those expectations, I won't be an asshole about it. The fans will, though. They'll <laughs> keep on uh, uh, review bombing that, like. These Marvel fans, they really have issues with any females um, that get their own movies. So, Dude, it's our demographic, know. but that's a nice lead into We Got Trailers. Mm -hmm. Here are some exciting coming attractions from Movies and Beyond. Uh... I mean, some of these are exciting. Some of them are not so exciting <laughs> for well, our trailers. Let's. I mean, I mean, I think it goes kind of up and down. First one is Mandalorian. Um, Mandalorian season three. We saw the pilot in Book of Boba Fett. Um, I haven't finished Book of Boba Fett, which now I feel like watching that trailer. Like, I think I missed something <laughs> potentially. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, like I said. The other part, the later part of a uh, book of Boba Fett's uh, kind of like a uh, Mandalorian two point five. Yeah, I so watch I, it. Just watch it. Yeah, I need to finish that because I'm like right in that part where I'm like, hey, this is really cool, and uh, I don't know. I, I uh, something else caught my eye, and I started watching that instead. But I do need to go back and finish it. Oh man, this uh, is different for you for sure because I watched that trailer and I was like, dude. Uh, Mando and Grogu are going on some adventures. <laughs> yeah. It, well, I guess we can't really get into it. I don't even if anyone has only finished, uh, you know, season two, they're going to be confused by this one. And it, it didn't watch Boba Fett. Or if you haven't seen any of the seasons and you just watched this trailer for some reason, you are probably going to be really confused, but things I'm, <laughs> Things I'm excited about, though, uh, more bounty hunters, more mm -hmm. uh, Mandalorians. Um, I'm curious about how that's going to happen, and especially with how the events of um, the last time we saw Mando. You know, he was, uh, you know, I guess excommunicated. I don't know. I get <laughs> too much. I I don't know. It looks what you're cool. telling me I'm is in. Disney spoiled the <clears throat> shit out of the series for you if you didn't watch anything. So if you yes, like why didn't they say like, 
hey, if you've seen The Mandalorian seasons one and two, it's not enough. You need to go watch this. <laughs> go watch The Mandalorian 2.5. Yep. Um, well, I've seen it all, and I think it looks fantastic. So, Peter, catch up, and I think you'll be uh, up to speed. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead, Ryan. Next one is Tales of the Jedi. I didn't know this was coming out because uh, D23 just unreleased. Uh, they released a shit ton of Star Wars content for us, which we were asking for. Um, is it enough to catch up with Marvel? No. But this is a Clone Wars uh, six-part series, right? There's going to be six episodes, miniseries about um, Ahsoka. I... Uh... Well, not I don't think all of it. <clears throat> Definitely not all of it. Uh this is it's from the creators of you know, the Bad Batch, uh, you know, the Clone Wars, all that. And it's I think six short stories, which you know, when when I watched this trailer, it reminded me of uh Diabolical for the boys, mm. where you can just take little elements that were you know that you want to expand upon from star wars like there's like a, a ahsoka um short in there where you kind of see where she comes from like uh count uh dooku Droku, dooku yeah he's in there like like it's it looks really cool and kind of interesting to see these pe these characters um you know in some short stories you know in a new light basically so uh, I'm I'm totally on board. I can't can't wait for that. Uh, which I really, I've started a long long time ago to watch all the Clone Wars and like I'm like these are really good. But there's so many that I just kind of like I stop and I I go off to something else. Mm -hmm. And I also heard like the Bad Batch is amazing. Like mm -hmm. like there's that animation like that team is really good. So that's I think Dave Filoni, dude. Dave Filoni has been part of that for a long time so yeah <clears throat> he's a good storyteller and, but you know he's not like korg he's like <laughs> dave Filoni. so yeah so so that uh i am looking forward to because i think i think that might be fun just because they're short stories i don't have to know that much you know bing yeah. or bingo bingo <clears throat> whatever <laughs> But I, that's what will keep me interested in this because they're short stories and I don't have this. I have this to play around with, not this yeah. or this. Yeah. I don't have, I, can, I can do this, not <laughs> this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. the viewers, the viewers got what you're, you're putting down. Yeah. And the listeners too. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. Hey, I want to save this one for last because I want to talk about this one since it goes with D23 and, um, Apparently, I'm supposed to watch Pinocchio, but The Little Mermaid just released the first tr live action trailer. And I saw some iconic scenes. I saw it underwater. And then we saw Ariel. What are your thoughts? Mm, not, not necessary. Um, my wife and I watched this, I think, that <laughs> drunken night. I'm pretty sure it was the end of that drunken night. Where she uh, was like, "Oh, look at this!" and we we put it on. And we we're just like, "Why? Why is this?" You know, I I guess she kind of sounded similar to the original, but I, I I just don't understand why Disney needs this has this need to recreate all these classics but they're not putting any like unique spin on them or anything like <clears throat> Peter, their just... unique spin is that she's a young black girl underwater. That's Disney it's live You're... action. That's yeah. the spin too. Like I, it's just, it makes no sense to me. And, and I just, it's a, it's a waste of everyone's time. Quit trying to make, make your classics controversial. If, <clears throat> They didn't need to point it out who the actress was and just let it be what it is, man. I mean, if you just let this movie be what it is, um, have a cork spin to it or a story tell, that's your spin, dude. You don't have to do a shot by shot like here's a recreation of the classic. But the only thing different is we have a little black girl with dreads like Disney. <laughs> that's not 
that's not creative. What you're doing is creating unnecessary backlash and controversy. And for the record, I don't care what color my characters are in live action remakes of Disney movies, you know, for all, all that. Ma and dude, people have literally blown up about, about, Oh, well she can't have dark skin because she's underwater. Her pigmentation doesn't matter. Shut up. Shut up. It's a freaking <laughs> movie about a girl who's a mermaid, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the other part. She's also a mermaid. <laughs> yeah. You know? uh, and you know, Jeremy and I were talking about this too. And, He's like, why do you think they did that? I said, well, Jeremy, she has dreadlocks. He goes, does that make sense on underwater? And I said, yeah, think about <laughs> it. That is easier for the CGI artist to make dreadlocks instead of refined CGI hair. I was like, it, it's a story. Let her have dreadlocks. Who cares? And if yeah. she has dread type of hair or, you know, as they say, ethnic kind of hair, like, oh, my God, people are going nuts. But who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, I I don't care, and I don't care about this movie. So I'm this sure I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to watch it probably at some point because I'm sure Gianna is gonna want to watch it. But dude, you're gonna watch this movie more <laughs> every other week. You're gonna be like, well, I I need to review uh, the Little Mermaid again. <laughs> Maybe I I don't know because here's the thing: like every other like live action Disney movie. I think the only one I've actually ever sat through and finished was the Jungle Book one, but it was also the one dude. Really, the Jungle Book I actually enjoyed, and it was it was different enough. Mm -hmm. Like it, and so I think I enjoyed that. I tried watching The Lion King, that that photorealistic one. I was like, this is exactly like the other one. I just watched the cartoon; it's better. Yep. Um, I tried. We put on Aladdin at one point because when we first got Disney Plus. Holy crap, that was awful. Terrible movie, dude. Like the the singing alone and them trying to recreate it just awful. So I, I turned that off. Like we we have not finished any one of them. The only I'm I'm curious about Mulan because I always thought that one could actually work. Um but they left out the dragon. I know people got upset about that, or you guys thought about it, but and then and then Beauty and the Beast, I thought was like one of the only really good ones. Well, and even okay, Beauty and the Beast, still though, like okay, I finished that one. It's not necessary though. Mm -hmm. All they did was add in one new song, and that was the only change to it. Oh, and they made Cinderella. I don't think I watched Cinderella either. <laughs> so, I I have a feeling. Peter's going to have a household meeting and be like, okay, if we watch Disney classics, they are cartoons and cartoons only. <laughs> well, and, and luckily, you know, there's eventually there's going to be a point, right? You know, kids nowadays, like even my, my youngest right now, there's a real potential that she's only going to know. These are the classics, right? Oh All these live actions are the classics. It's like, what cartoons? Uh I don't know. That won't well, happen because I won't show her those. They're making Snow White and I, you know. Yeah. Who cares? But um, but dude, I'm excited to talk about this trailer because I watched all four of these just now and The Curse of Bridge Hollow. Are you excited for this? A little bit. Did it remind you of something? <laughs> Give me a hint. <laughs> I think it reminded Peter of something so bad he's choking and died over there. Sorry, <laughs> looking for the, for the mute button. <laughs> Dude, okay, you had Halloween decorations coming to life. What other trailer did we just do last week? Spirit Hollow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I literally I saw this trailer and I was like, holy shit, I think Netflix might beat them to it. <laughs> you know? Peter. What okay, I want to get this off my chest. I think that the age of B movies is coming back. That to me is a B movie thing. We get a theme with spirit Halloween movies, and then we get the knockoffs by all these different streaming services. We're getting the same movie, but we're getting different variants of the same movie, which are the knockoffs or the B rated movies. It's up. This is a, a whole new thing for the podcast. We get to decide which one's the A-list movie and which one's the B-list movie. 
That's true, but you know, so often though, it's uh, I feel it's the one that gets out first is usually the best one. <clears throat> well, I mean, that was always. Oh no, that wasn't because remember, Transformers would come out, but like a week later, Transmorphers would be out. Or and before, it's better. Yeah, Transmorphers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is coming out October fourteenth. When is the uh, Spirit? You know what? Yeah. As you look that up, what I like about this is, uh, dude, this is Marlon Wayans. At the beginning <laughs> of the trailer, I was like, man, are we going to get boring Marlon Wayans? But then midway through, I was like, nope. Classic scary movie, like jump yeah. scared, frantic, kill, trying to kill things, Marlon Wayans, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it looks like it's a family film, but I, I like those. I mean, especially during Halloween. Like, if you just give me a a fun story where they're they're doing the great thing like they do like in a animated like superhero shows you know like like ninja turtles right they always fight robots right and stuff like that so that they, they get away with the violence and so this all right we're just fighting like some stuff you know decorations basically so we get to be kind of brutal we get to rip off arms and all that because mm -hmm. it's fake it doesn't yeah. matter and you're still kid friendly so Hey, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Um, did you notice some of the killer um, robot zombies? Were they the killer clowns from outer space? They did look very similar. Um, yeah, I, I I got that vibe too. I got that vibe. Oh, the other thing right I thought there, that. Yeah, sorry. Go that, ahead. That right there kind of sold me on the whole trailer because yeah. I was like, "That's a killer clown. That's a killer clown." But yeah okay. we're, we're getting into that time of year though where we're gonna get a lot of you know the various halloween you know movies like this so i'm i'm looking forward to it uh i did look up spirit it, it comes out three days before the the curse of uh bridge hollow um october 11th so so close Peter, enough for our, the episode after those you and i need to pick one or the other and we review compare and spoil okay i think we, we're gonna have to watch both it'd be interesting to see which one's actually you know more fun right i agree that's just going straight to netflix or this one that's going to go to the theater so what oh the spirit's going to theater <laughs> <laughs> he's so confused he's choked up about it i'm sorry that good. Hurt. Yeah. Uh pretty sure that's going to the theaters first. Love it. Well, that's our trailers. We got some yeah. uh we got some news coming up. Yeah. There was I didn't watch this, but there is a new trailer for Willow and I don't know. I saw enough of that first trailer from Willow that I don't need to see another one. It looks Perfect. good. Yep. All right. <laughs> news news we have um let's just say david arbor is in the news a lot but <laughs> what real quick have you noticed have you looked at our notes on google docs ryan what part have you noticed anything strange with any of them i don't um, know if it's updating but like for whatever reason i'm like going through it and I, I, I guess I'm hitting my microphone button because it starts recording everything I'm saying and typing it out just randomly into sections of the notes. So if you see <laughs> that, you know, that's why you're like, hey, I didn't type that in there. Um, oh, yeah. No, I see that right there. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. I was like, what the hell is happening? So, <clears throat> Ryan, you put all these notes in there. Why don't you take it away, buddy? All right, man. So first one, James Cameron says 3D movies are not as dead as Hollywood believes. Shut up, James Cameron. <laughs> yeah, I think they're dead enough. You're not the bringing this one back, dude. The gimmick's kind of over. I mean, uh, is this is Avatar going to be in 3D? Well, the, by the sounds of it, it looks like it is. But I haven't seen anything promoting this to be in 3D. Yeah. 
When was the last yeah. 3D movie you actually saw, Ryan? Can you remember? <clears throat> no, no, not at all. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I saw Star Wars The Force Awakens in 3D in Japan. That was in 3D? Yeah, dude, not only was it in 3D, but it was in um it was in English, but it had Japanese subtitles. Did it bring anything to the table? No. I can't. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Uh, it, it's not necessary. Like The fact that I can't even remember the last time I saw a 3D movie. The only thing that sticks out in my mind is one time I tried to go see Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. And it wasn't the 3D version. Yet they started to play the 3D version. And so it was all fucked up. And I was like, what the fuck? And so we had to sit there like another like 15 minutes while they straightened everything out and we got our normal version. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did 3D. To, and I've said this before, like the 3D gimmick to me is just a gimmick. I don't see things in 3D. I see the screen pushed back. I don't see characters jumping out at me. I don't, I don't get the experience. So me, it just never hit with me. I mean, dude, I even avatar is like, yeah, just, I, think i get it but um i, I just re read in this article that the, the, they're not going to be made in 3d <laughs> yeah he's saying there is 3d is not dead yet <laughs> well he said although cameron didn't reveal how 3d technology would be utilized in the sequels hmm. so um, i mean unless he's just talking about the capturing you know the motion capture i mean i guess that's you could argue that's three-dimensional how they're rendering it you know but i don't know i think it's pretty much dead would i go i'm not gonna say i would never go see another 3d movie especially horror movies i always thought that was always fun because they would do the you know stupid things or it's some movies that understand that they're in 3d like did you ever see harold and kumar in 3d the the christmas movie um no i never saw that one in 3d Oh, like that was actually kind of fun. Again, stupid gimmick, but nonstop, just trying to throw shit at you, you know, like they're taking advantage of the 3D gimmick. So that's what's fun. Peter, uh, the last would... 3D movie ever made was Disney's Far From the Tree in November 20, November 24th of 2021. What the hell is that? Don't know. The last... <laughs> um. It looks like some Pixar movies, but nothing like Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, Toy Story Toons, Party Source Rex. I don't know. Like these are all like like <clears throat> C rated, like made for TV movies, but not in most most three D movies I feel like I've seen. I have never walked out saying, "Man, I'm so glad I saw that was made in three D." Pretty much everything's been. That did not add anything. If anything, it just made the action worse. <laughs> oh, I'm a liar, Peter. Um, Minions was the last digital 3D movie released. This year? Yeah. Didn't see it, so. Yep. Whatever. Anyway, uh, moving on. Let's get James to the David Arbor, <laughs> Arbor movies. We're going we're gonna to <laughs> rename this segment David Arbor. Um Dude, Thunderbolts was released. The cast. Um, mm -hmm. Did you see any of this? I loved uh, that we are getting a Thunderbolts movie. It seems like uh, we're getting Young Avengers, the Thunderbolts. But I want to watch Thunderbolts over Young Avengers because I like these characters already. You know? Yeah. I like yeah. Bucky. I like the Black Widow. I like the U.S. Agent Taskman. Um, task. Yeah, Taskmaster. Master. Um, yeah. And uh, David Arbor's character, the the Soviet guy, I forgot his name. The Red Baron? No, Red, it's Red, not Red Baron, is it? Red Bear or something. He might be the Red Baron. Maybe. Yeah, I liked him too, though. <laughs> and then um, I always forget her name as well, but it's uh, Julia Lua Dreyfus, and then you get Ghost mm -hmm. from Ant Man. So I think this is a good cast, dude. I think this is awesome. Valentina Allegra de Fonte. Yeah, and Red Guardian. That's the two. Red Guardian, not Red Baron. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bear. <laughs> yeah, Red Bear. Uh, yeah, I like the casting. I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, that's gonna be fun. 
Um, <clears throat> more David Arbor news, and this is strange, but uh, Gran Turismo movie cast David Arbor in starring role. So they're making a movie about a car simulation game where there's barely any humans and it's all cars. I hope it's just him simulating. He's in the simulator. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope he's just like played PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, some of these <clears throat> these ideas, it's just so weird. It's like The Last of Us, like that's coming out, and all of us are like, what's going on with that? That's weird. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Get new ideas, guys. Get new ideas, like... Stranger Things, David Arbor is an ass-kicking Santa in the first Violent Night poster. Is it supposed to be Violent Night? Or is it supposed to be... Like, when I read that, I thought it was supposed to be, like, Silent Night. Stranger Things, David Arbor is a ruthless Chris Kringle in the first poster for Universal Pictures' upcoming action comedy film, Violent Night. Okay. Well, you know, I am totally on board with that because this reminds me of silent night and that's a lot of fun especially that, the second one was that the one with goldberg no that was uh santa slays right yeah yeah that's good. That, I, I mean i love it i love when they get violent and they put it into the holiday season <laughs> Perfect. you know it's just an extension of which is weird think about it we're getting more Family friendly Halloween movies, but we're getting more violent Christmas movies. That is weird. That is interesting because Halloween is supposed to be violent, so they want to go family friendly to make you know, you know, not scare the kids. And uh, Christmas is supposed to be lighthearted, and there's enough lighthearted films that then you go violent. It's great. I like it. Switch yeah. it up. That's that's good storytelling, right? I, there. Does it say when this is coming out? Do we know that? Uh, let's see. It says only in theaters, December second. It's a theater movie. Yeah, as well as it should be. But like, <laughs> we're we're thinking like this year, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. I like these little surprises, you know, um, that just come out of nowhere. I had no idea this was a thing, dude. Tommy Workola, Dead Snow direct directed the upcoming film, which was written by Patrick Casey and Josh Miller from Sonic the Hedgehog. And it's under the 87 North banner, which is um, they made that uh, movie Nobody with Bob yeah, Odenberg. Which I loved. Dude, this is going to uh, be this is gonna be great. We're going to have a fantastic holiday season of movies, Peter. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> That's cool. Uh, all right. December 2nd. I know where I'm going to be. <clears throat> huh. Batman. I hope, we get, I hope we get a trailer soon. Me too. Batman speaks silence on Batgirl cancellation. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Michael Keaton. <laughs> um, so basically, he's saying um, he's not sure if Batman's going to return. Like they're going to have him in the Flash, but they're, he's not sure if it's going to come around. But basically, he said, "I think it's a good business decision, and I'm going to assume it was a good one. I don't really know." Lame reasoning, Batman. That's not a very Bruce Wayne thing to say, dude. Well, it is a business decision. I don't know. It's just they need to make a Batman, <clears throat> dude. And it, like, I don't know why they're trying to make movies about his belt or Alfred. Just <laughs> <laughs> Those are good movies. Uh, did Did you ever watch that Teen Titans? Where yeah. like Robin's ready for his movie and they're like doing everything else besides him. Yeah, the belt, the oh my Batmobile. God. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I want to see I know. Batman, dude. I know, and um, everything I hear is that Batgirl's actually like it, it was coming along nicely, and even some early test screenings were saying it was good. But uh, I don't know. That's just a. Uh, it's a weird deal, but uh, that's Warner Brothers now. They're just weird. I mean, they've always been weird, but don't get it. Yeah, this last one's interesting. Um, people are starting to find merch for a lot of uh, upcoming Marvel and Sony <laughs> movies. Uh, some people were showing some merch from Into the Spider or In the Spider Verse or Return the Spider Verse or Welcome. Cross the Cross the 
Spider Verse. The Spider Verse. Yeah. But this one I'm excited about was <clears throat> see it. Leaked merch potentially reveals first look at live action MODO. Your body, what's up? As long as we're doing it weekly, right? Yeah, yeah. You know. Oh wait, that was what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if the link still works. Does the link Did still you... work? <laughs> yeah, the link works. Check, nice. check a look at this um, uh, merch of in this photo of Modok. Uh, if anybody doesn't know who Modok is, he's a he's a giant head, and he's. He, dude, like in his TV series, he's Patton Oswald, and like it, when you mm-hmm. see this character, he's Patton Oswald. But on this merch, um, they kind of MCU'd him up, and I think they found a good way to balance it out instead of putting a giant CGI face on a weird alien looking character like Krang, you know? Yeah, um, I don't know, I think it's 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 a pretty cool picture. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Breaking news. Yep. The fact if that's if that's accurate and it's really true, I guess there's some kind of confirmation that it might be authentic, but um we'll see. I just I'm getting really excited for that one just because of the fact that it's they keep on saying it's something that it's just so out of this world <clears throat> and so different from all the other ant-man movies that i'm really looking forward to that one but i'm also trying to keep my expectations low because everything else has really sucked since you know this phase five right phase five uh we're going to be in phase five okay so phase four not so hot hopefully phase five is fantastic yeah phase five is shaping up pretty good um if Michael Pena is Luis in narrating Ant Man Quantumania, would you be okay with that? <laughs> yeah, I would be. It'd be fun. Okay. <laughs> It'd be a really quick movie, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Just... <laughs> oh, nice. Um, um, let's speak about it real quick. You ready? Mm hmm. Do it. Do we got to talk about it yet? What? No. Oh. <laughs> I was going to tell you how clean Just... my... <laughs> you need to tell them about our podcast. How clean our podcast is. Mm-hmm. You need to... when you, Whenever you shower, you need to get your phone up on in the ledge and just play B-Movies and Beyond, and we'll get squeaky clean with you. We'll lather oh, you yeah. up with awesome news, some trailers, some things to recommend. And usually our podcasts are about an hour and a half, sometimes two to three hours. So if you like long showers, <laughs> just continue it's just perfect. listening to us. Yeah. Should um, we invest in towels so they can dry off with us? No, we want you soaking wet. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, that's our next sponsor is the one who uh, wants... Oh, B-Movies and Beyond Towels would be fantastic. You're a smart exactly thinker. <laughs> Thank you. You're a smart thinker. <laughs> Brainstorming live. <laughs> Brainstorming live. So <laughs> soon enough, wear a towel, B Movies and Beyond, and support us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the podcasts, pretty much all the podcasts, um, B Movies and Beyond, at B Movies Beyond. And what else, Peter? YouTube? Watch us. Yep. You can see our handsome faces. It's true. You can see yeah. uh, Ryan's measurement styles. <laughs> Yeah, go to our website, bmoviesbeyond.com. That links to everything you need. So buy our shit. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't have the other one loaded up. Oh, no. What are we going to do? We're going to just pause for a minute for what is the what we like to call the potatoes. Or the meat. It's the fucking meat. In me. Fucking me. Fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> um Ryan, I'm gonna go first, okay? Deal. I uh I uh alluded to this. I actually I, I guess not really alluded, but uh I recommended this film last week when Aaron was on the show. Uh, Fall, 
And I guess I did allude to it that I might review it in the future. Well, the future is now. I know. And I'm going to review Fall um, starring Jeffrey Dean Morgan as the father. And <laughs> then um, who else is in this film? I guess I should have pulled this up before I was going to start talking. Um, Grace Caroline Curry. I think that's how you say that. She's okay. Becky. Virginia Gardner. She's a uh, Shiloh. Um, and that's pretty much all you need to know. And Jeffrey Dean Morgan is the dad. <clears throat> Are there literally three people in this movie? Uh, I mean, there's a couple others, but for the most part, yes, that is it. I mean, and it really is. It's uh, it's Becky and Shiloh. That is majority of this film. Uh, you have a couple random just people that just kind of show up here and there for, you know, maybe a minute or so. Uh, you know, besides those two characters, the next person that probably has the most screen time is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. And then after that, it's this uh, uh, the husband, Mason uh, Gooding. So uh, who played Dan? Connor married to Becky Connor. Uh, and so, <laughs> wait, 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 what the what Becky Connor? She's that's the girl in here, uh, in the movie. Yeah, but is it if it's Dan Connor and Becky Connor, aren't those from Roseanne? That is weird, and that's like father and daughter. Mm. Uh, I wonder if there's something there. Anywho, fall is the story of two best friends, Becky and Hunter. They find themselves at the top of a 2,000 foot radio tower. Uh, are they best friends? Best they friends. are best friends, not lesbians. <laughs> there you have it, Liz Olivia. They're best yes. friends, yes. not lesbians. Um, and I know I was very uh, sep spectacle. No, sep Skep skeptical. Skeptical. Uh, of this movie when we first watched the trailer i was just like how are they gonna pull this off i just i'm not sure if it's gonna work out and i gotta say like it, it's labeled as a thriller and i was thrilled i was thrilled um i mean they did this in the trailer so i'm not gonna be spoiling anything but it starts off where they're rock climbing outside it's uh hunter uh becky and I guess this is the spoiler part. Becky's husband and Becky's husband falls off. <gasps> yes. So that's the dynamic. You know, Hunter's trying to get her best friend back out there, you know, conquer her fears. You cannot stay locked up just drinking your sorrows away. Um, that's also uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's trying to do the same thing, like, you know, like get his daughter break her free of this sorrow which i mean that's tough man it's really tough and so that's why they're doing this this is their epic thing hunter is this uh um you know action babe youtube star where she you know gets to put the tits out and everything and go do some extreme shit right oh okay uh and so this is what they're gonna go do which climb this 2000 foot radio tower which is rust as shit you can tell like like as they're climbing it up you know like the the director did a great job of showing like this thing is not that secure and then you know what happens right they get stuck ladders come apart they're stuck at the very tippy top um and so and that's the rest of the film man it's them trying to survive on this trying to figure out ways which you wouldn't think there is that many ways to potentially try to get out of this scenario, but they came up with a, a handful of them that surprised me that kept it moving in a good direction. Also just, you know, the interactions between Becky and Hunter were good in their dynamic. And, uh, you know, some of it's very predictable, obviously like it's, you know, the, um, you know, issues that may yeah issues that they might have between friends um are a bit predictable <laughs> do they become uh, lesbians yes on the tower <laughs> just, just kidding 
<laughs> yeah. This is directed by Scott Mann. But, oh, dang it. Who? Someone is related. Help do 47 meters down, which you can see why it, it is. I would say you can tell that how it's heavily influenced by by that movie. Uh, dang, I don't know who's connected to that. Maybe it's just a producer. I don't think it's Scott Mann. Did you, you saw 47 meters down, right? <clears throat> the shark movie? Uh, no, I saw the movie with uh, Blake Lively. No, The Shallows. That's really good, too. Yeah. Uh, 47 meters down has uh, Mandy Moore. Um, oh, wait, yeah. I have seen that. That's a long time ago, right? Yeah, not too long ago, but it, it is really good. Anywho, you could see there was definitely some influences on things that happened that were like that happened in 47 meters down that kind of relate to this, this movie. Um, but I gotta say, like I said, it brings the thrill. Uh, I didn't think I was going to enjoy as much as I did. And just the idea of just getting stuck up on this, this small platform, 2000 feet. And they would like do these shots, just looking down, uh, you're you know you feel the tension right you're like Ooh, like it makes you nervous and they would also do these like one of the things like since this this hunter is doing like these video youtube channel things uh like she had a drone so they had like, this big old drone you know flight you know going all around and you just see you feel the seclusion you know the the you know just how stuck you are uh, from this and it's not a found footage film by the way what was your question ryan if she has a drone why didn't she just send the drone to the ground and find a human maybe that was one of the things they tried doing but drones take power also it was really far away from a diner or something things happen ryan some Where was their them? cell phone if they were on a cell phone tower? Uh, no service is way too high up. They're on the tower. The tower. Did I say it was a cell phone tower? Radio was... towers. Different. It's very <clears throat> different. Why didn't they tune into my radio station and call in and been like, yo, we're stuck on this tower. Like, can you stop talking about the Broncos? And <laughs> so they bring a handheld, <laughs> handheld a radio up there. Um, I don't know. Anyways, <clears throat> there's something a little bit for everyone. You got two attractive women. You got Jeffrey Dean Morgan. You got heights. You got drones. You got ladder climbing. And then what else can, do you need for a great movie? <laughs> Lesbians? I didn't say, Who knows? Oh, who knows? Cool. All right. I am in. Yeah. So, uh, is it a uh, long movie? Like, I can't imagine them being up there for no, at, and you know what? It's sh it actually probably is a little bit longer than what it needs to be, like an hour and 47 minutes. So, not too terribly long. Um, and I think that's just because I, there was one scene where I feel like, eh, you probably could have cut this down, like vultures. Oh, that's all I'll say. Vultures. <laughs> oh, why don't they grab the vulture's legs and fly down with them? The one thing they did try. <laughs> oh man, I would have grabbed. Yeah, like I think the vulture could hold your weight, right? <coughs> Maybe. Um, yeah, I. Uh, I don't know. I I do have one question. I just I don't know. Maybe this is giving out too much, but. Is this a thing? Do you think you can unscrew a light bulb and then stick like the end of your plug to something and get power from that? That, uh, you know, the inside of a, you know, where the light bulb goes. Like, I know that like, there's got to be something, but could you actually make a full connection to actually get power? Yeah, you can. Because if you think about like a light bulb socket, like here's the round part. The yeah. edge, the edge is the positive 
part and then the center point is the negative so when you are like the so ground you could do the prongs and set up so you're doing the full connection huh? Mm -hmm. huh that was one of the things that i was like i'm not too sure if this is accurate or not but i'll go with it so that's fall you can uh were uh, they trying to charge the drone with it <laughs> um it is out there to uh, to buy vod so um i do i i recommend it i just like last week i still recommend it and i it's a fun watch if you liked 47 meters down i think you'll like this uh, yeah you'll like it there Perfect. you go yeah Perfect. it's good <clears throat> what do you got I ryan like well, um, I'm I'm getting a lot of news about this movie, so I do want to eventually see it. And if it's not too long, I wouldn't mind stopping watching wrestling documentaries to watch this movie. Yeah, I think you could probably, you know, put in a quick hour forty seven in there for, in between. <laughs> All right, <Your> wrestling. <laughs> um, I want to review Day Shift. All right, I watched this. This is the other movie I watched. <clears throat> we didn't, both you and I didn't review this because Aaron was on the show and he didn't want us to. Out of respect, we gave him respect. And then in return, we didn't spoil bodies, bodies, bodies for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Just, I have not seen. Which is uh, <clears throat> fantastic still. I mean, bodies, bodies, bodies still has me thinking. But Day Shift. Day Shift is... It's aware of what it is. Mm -hmm. The directors finally know, like, they're like, they're what, the director of John Wick or the team that brought you John Wick? Um, yeah. But it's a movie about Jamie Foxx, who is a, what, you find out right away, he's a vampire hunter, like, and they collect vampires' teeth for money. And that's, there's like this, um, oh, what's the word? Union. Union. Thank you. The union. And, you get paid more for being in the union, but you can't break any of the rules or the code or anything. Well, you find out early that he has, and they won't let him back in there. But he's down on his luck, and he's trying to uh, get back with his see, see his baby girl and get some money because his current wife is divorcing him, splitting up, and moving across country and trying to sell the house. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's his motivation. So he teams up with, with freaking Snoop Dogg. And Snoop Dogg gets him back in the union, but everybody in the union is trying to, um, like, be against him. So, with the I forgot the director's name, but the director of the union or the main guy was basically like, yeah, you could be back. We're going to give you a trial run. And he sets him up for failure, and his failure is Dave Franco. Yeah. Well, it also puts him on the day shift because and it's not as profitable as the night shift. Yeah. So the good vampires come out at night. And they, and what I like about this movie is you get a variation of vampires. You get like fresh vampires or vampires that have been vampires for X amount of time and they become more valuable. So it adds to the hunting element of the movie. Like the the union, they want to hunt aged vampires because it's a higher kill or a higher reward while fresh vampires aren't. But what you're starting to find out in this is Dave Franco has read the book through and through. So he knows he's adapted to how vampires have adapted as well. Meanwhile, we're starting to find out there's hybrid vampires and, and they're starting to um, blend with each other and, work with each other and and whatnot but <laughs> did we ever figure out the motive behind the the vampires uh yeah they just want the land back basically oh yeah they're trying to buy land yeah and try and control more of yeah yeah okay so yeah. the union teams up jamie fox with dave franco and you're, what kind of pairing would you say? It's not like a Batman and Robin. It's more of like, oh, it's like he doesn't follow the rules. He knows the rules, but he doesn't follow them. Well, Dave Franco is by the book and everything that he does is by the book. But that's yeah. that's his motive to kick him out of the union as well. That's why they're paired together. And Franco just wants to just have an, a desk job. He doesn't want to be out in the field either. I thought he did want the field. 
no, no, he just wanted to move up in the desk job. And then throughout the movie, he starts to want to be in the field. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess um, I was confused by that because I thought like there was a part with the, uh, uh, you know, the main director of the union, you know, saying like, this is the only way that you're going to be able to move up. You know, but I guess in the I guess he meant with the office, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think her name was Janice, but he's like, Oh, do you want Janice's job or something? Yeah. This is how you do it. So each one of these characters has their own story arc. Um, the one that I was most I wanted to learn more about was Snoop Dogg because he just kind of came in with Snoop Dogg and Snoop Dogged out. You know, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. but there was, it, he was just so mysterious, but that's kind of how you have to cast Snoop Dogg. You can't give him a major role where he has a lot of talking lines. Like he's a one-liner type of actor at all times. Uh, Jamie Foxx is a more dynamic one. And James Franco, dude, I've never really been a fan of him, but he really Dave? held his own. Yeah. Did I say James? Yeah. <laughs> James is no longer in Hollywood. <laughs> Dave is yeah. taking the place of his brother, but hopefully in a good way. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't let him teach you how to act, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> That's James. Um, yeah, I, I really like the dynamic between the two. Uh, you know, trying to see Dave Franco, uh, I guess, learn the ropes, you know? I thought that was kind of kind of cool. And also this, you know, their, their bonding, you know, I thought was is, was fun to watch as well. As Evan would say, this movie was fun, and it it realized what it was. You know, <clears throat> you start seeing vampire killing, and this is in a world where people don't realize there's vampires. You'll find out uh, Jamie Foxx's wife is like, "Oh yeah, you're a vampire killer," and he's like, "Yeah," and she's like, "Oh okay." But here's the th here, uh, Peter. This gets me every single time when they cast a little girl, and she has a lot of talking scenes, and she's terrible at it. She was a terrible actress. She ruined a lot of scenes for me because, like, they tried to make her quick and witty, but she just came off as stupid. Like, they should have cast Jake Lloyd more than her. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I didn't have too many issues with her. Come on, I, the I, car chase scene where she's sitting there playing Mario Kart, well, acting that like was, nothing happened, and she that like, was just dumb. That was just it, a dumb scene. That's all. It's not her fault. That was just kind of like I, like you. I understood the gimmick and what they were trying to do. I just thought, oh, it's like, oh, whatever. It's, you know, it was the whole like earmuff thing. All right. Hang on. Don't pay attention to what daddy's doing. Earmuffs, you know, like it, it's just one of those silly gimmicks. And I, I kind of liked how they were uh, showing what was going, what she was doing in Mario Kart and then what was actually happening in, you know, real life. Yeah. It was almost very similar, which I thought that part was amusing. And I thought the way they shot that and edit together was entertaining. But yes, just her not being totally oblivious to like what is going on around here. Yeah, that's the dumbest thing ever. It was silly. <laughs> well, that leads me to the point of the, this movie. It, it, again, it's self-aware of itself. And it was silly. You know, it was over the top action vampires pulling teeth chopping off heads reanimation lots of vomit lots of blood uh, black blood lots of mm -hmm. um john wick style kills but we're just over the top the one thing I, i'll say is if they're going to make a john wick 4 and it's going to be anything like this i'm out on john wick like this doesn't translate to the john wick world and three was kind of over the top but if they get to the point where it's day shift, then I'm out. So Sorry. you're saying if they bring in uh, vampires, you're no longer in for John Wick. Or car chase scenes with little girls with earmuffs that are playing <laughs> Mario Kart. <laughs> what if it's of a, when it's of a dog or a, of a little girl, it's a dog. Play Mario Kart? I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, is there anything I didn't cover without spoiling it? Uh, n no, like... No, I what I would say is that you already, you already said it. It's, it's just it's a fun movie. This is a fun, dumb movie. I thought the action was fantastic, and that's 
what I can to see with this film. I want to see some fantastic uh, 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 action from it. And it was a little bit over the top because of the effect of what they could do with vampires. So that was the other fun part. Uh, like there's a whole, like the middle fight scene uh, with, you know, where they go into this house is I think phenomenal. Oh, with the brothers. Yeah. With the brothers. Yeah. I, and then the universe is well that they created. Like that was just scratching the surface in my opinion of this, this film, you know, like, they rattle across like all these different like breeds of vampires and, and then like just the, the different levels of like this tooth is worth this much and blah, blah, blah. You like that you mentioned uh, the idea that there's a whole nother shift, a night shift. Like I would totally watch a sequel to this. That's pretty much what I'm, I'm getting at with this is it, like you just go in there you get to shut down your shut off your brain and just have a really good time watching Jamie Foxx beat the shit out of some vampires. Why Dave Frank you know, does some weird stuff. Um, and then, and you do really have to shut off your brain because there's parts where uh, some of the transitions in the character arc would do like this massive weird jump. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was, you know, at the time, I was just kind of like, "Well, that's kind of odd," but uh, who f- who cares? They're back to fighting. Yeah. I don't care. So, it's a good fighting movie, mm-hmm. and uh, um, it has a lot of gun action and you know stabbing and and like kill shots and like head, you know, like st- just really call and Call of Duty where they, like stab them and they're like, "Oh yeah, that was a cool kill." Like just stuff like that, you know? Yeah, I I mean. Seriously, though, like, I mean, if they made us another movie, if they did like Day Shift 2 or Night Shift, whatever, like, wouldn't you watch it? I would watch Night Shift, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was invested enough, and in, in the things that they did with this are, um, you know, were enjoyable. So I'm, I'm on board if they hopefully they get a chance. Like, again, like, just. <clears throat> I think Netflix has gotten on a roll lately, especially this year. I feel like, um, you know, like the Adam project I thought was fantastic. You know, this movie, like, I mean, they all had like little issues, you know, but for the most part, dude, I'd watch every single one of those movies in a movie theater. Right. <coughs> and I would, yeah. I would yeah, watch this I, in a movie theater. Yeah. And I would leave like satisfied. I, I think that's the biggest thing. I'm satisfied with these films. Um, even the the gray man too, you know, like that was something like, but again, the thing you got to do with each of these is that, you know, you're going into a, you know, a popcorn film where you just got to shut down and just enjoy it. Uh, you know, and they don't do anything super weird that just changes like the ending of the film. Like that was the other thing that Netflix was doing really a lot which was weird was that i just never felt like any of these films really ended all these movies they they stay true from start to finish so in the end yeah yeah. well this one ended but it didn't but like you got a satisfying ending like if this didn't do well i was satisfied with the ending of this yeah absolutely yeah yeah satisfying so cool yeah um i recommend it Got two recommendations. It's, it's probably our first ever on this show, <laughs> dude. Well, I haven't watched Fall, but I keep on hearing good things. And dude, you gotta you gotta watch Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I think I heard rumblings that it's coming out next uh, next week. So for VOD. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's kind of wondering. Like, I like that they're giving these like you know a short theatrical release. You know, give them a chance. Like I, I think they deserve to be on the big screen. But you know, I people like me, I just, I'm not able to get out to the movie theaters as much as I would like to. So eight twenty four. Send Peter a, a private copy of Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Please and thank you. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 God. I like how it just kind of gets quiet there at the end. 
Um, <laughs> what should I recommend? You know, um, this is one that you actually, you already have done. You reviewed this already, but pray. Mm. I got around to watching Prey myself uh, this past weekend, or no, two weekends ago, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, damn, it was good. Like, it is, like, I might even say the second best Predator movie. Behind the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, even... You know, yes, it's lower budget. You know, you talked about the CGI bear and stuff like that, but it didn't take me out of the film at all. Like, it was I, good enough. I thought it took me out for a moment, but then it just got better. Yeah. And I, I think that worked. You know, they, they got past that and they just went back to, you know, predator on women. I'm woman. <laughs> Action. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Watch what you said there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, on Hulu, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And that's another great. Again, we just talked about like just so many movies that, you know, a couple anyways, that went straight to streaming that are, dude, totally could have been in the movie theater, man. That's crazy. Yeah. We, sh like, we should have a sub podcast. This should have been in theaters. Yeah. Like the, I don't know what's going on, but they're hitting their stride, man. They're figuring their shit out. It's people have spent a, almost a year and a half locked up inside their homes, homes going stir crazy and now being creative and people are buying into it. So thank you for buying into it. Yeah. I can't I wait to see a samurai predator. Dude, I I hope you're right and they start continuing down that you know taking different eras so uh i again pray do a, a free subscription of hulu you know for like seven days give you that little trial and, and watch that so there you go love it um who recommendation mm, like i said i've been watching a lot of wrestling um documentaries and a and e like for some weird reason a and e decided to like double down on the history of wwe so yeah i was i was like why not you, you have know? a favorite one right now it's um wwe evil and it's the history behind like the villains in wrestling and the story behind the undertaker and kane being the brothers of darkness was just so freaking cool it was, like, it are these showing like behind the scenes like on how they develop these characters or are they just sh telling you what their fictional you know <clears throat> realities are i guess i'm confused it's, on what's going on the brothers uh the undertaker and kane one is a mix of both because the wwe has done a really good job <clears throat> of hiding the undertaker's like real life and still keeping him like this persona and they did that for many years yeah i don't I don't think I well, I think I vaguely know who the guy was, but I yeah I remember growing up and like, who is this guy? You have no idea who this person is. He was the Undertaker. Yeah, he that's was, all you knew. He was there to snatch your soul. They'd be they were talking about how they would do months of promos without him saying a word. Really? Yeah, like in wrestlers talk, they love to hear themselves mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. But the Undertaker just didn't talk all he did was walk out do a wrestling move and walk away and like and then when they added kane as his brother and had the whole story arc that he burned him alive in the house and came came back to murder him like dude this is if you take wrestling out of the equation <clears throat> this is a good storyline well that's why they try to make movies <laughs> you said a key word try yeah, try. <laughs> uh, so, are those? I, don't, I really, I should watch these documentaries, but like, I don't know. Are these guys still alive? Like, I mean, are they getting interviewed? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, like you'll see um, Undertaker. He's sitting down talking about how he started his career in WCW and they didn't like him and they didn't utilize his character properly. Meanwhile, um, WWE uh, 
had this idea of a character and they found Mark and were like, here you go. This is going to be you. And it's just like, okay. And then, you know, Kane is, if you look up Kane's history, he's, he's a mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee, Tennessee right now. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wow. And, but in the wrestling years, they were trying to find a character that would fit him. And um, there was at one point where he replaced another character because they fucked up a contract or something. And then they repackaged him as this, as the undertaker's little brother and, and like decided to just go balls out with it. you know, it's like they almost needed manscape to like hone him back in. <laughs> Probably seems yeah. about right. But I mean, not just, not just a Kane and uh, the undertaker, but like you got to see Sasha Banks is a wrestler that, She's Snoop Dogg's cousin. Never knew that. Wow. So Snoop Dogg has a cousin in wrestling, you know, and it's just it's just interesting to see. Like, you can sit back and say, yes, wrestling is fake. <laughs> but when you watch this stuff, they are just it's storytelling and storytelling at its finest. It has its peaks and valleys, but at the end of the day, dude, they're just creating good, wholesome action with wholesome. <laughs> now, but good. I mean, they're just doing at some point they were just doing whatever they can to get ratings, you know? Yeah. And at the end of, end of the day, that's what it's about, dude. Like I'm we, amazed. I'm amazed by it. I mean, in these docu series, I mean, more money to them, <clears throat> dude. A um, and E is doing the docu series. It's not like their own producing. It's like A and E. Like we used to watch the history of like World War Two on A and E, you know. Now the history of wrestling. Now the history of the Undertaker. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, I there's I know there's one that you mentioned this before on the show. It's just what was the one with like the guy is on an airplane or something, and and I don't know. Like I I have the YouTube like doc the thing like saved like in my watch later. Like I need to watch it. Do you know what I'm talking about? <coughs> Someone they, is. Some crazy just air flight and just some a crazy story of this guy on it. <clears throat> oh, it was um, it wasn't Chris Jericho, but it was with Vince McMahon, and um, they just got wasted and started fighting on the airplane or something. Yeah, I need to watch um, that. <laughs> the plane, the plane ride from, and that's on Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah, and yeah, and dude, the. the the one thing that they haven't really touched on in any of these series because it's controlled by the WWE is the amount of drug use, steroids, basic sexual assaults. Like it was, it was insane. I'm not, yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm not by, surprised by all that. Cause I mean, they probably thought they could get away with murder. Oh dude, there are a bunch of alpha males who are just jacked up on cocaine and mountain dew and like their days would consist of them going and practicing and staging the, the, their night and then when they're done they're bruised and battered so they go to the local bars and get hammered and do it all over again every single week wow it was insane so yeah well cool i uh i need to check that out you have got me uh um engaged in it i also know so, someone who would watch that with you peter <laughs> oh yeah 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 I, I, maybe this weekend <laughs> so you're like thanks you know every we're, we're watching right. wrestling documentaries <laughs> right thanks everyone for listening it's been real and we will catch you on the flip side flip side <laughs>